Hello guys, today I'm going to be going over the HMI light. This light is one of the workhorse of the film industry and TV. This light is known for its power efficiency, daylight color, and its intensity. In this video, I'm going to go over the M8 light from Aerie. All HMI lights operate almost exactly the same until you get to the big 18K lights, which can be separated from a single-ended or a double-ended bulb. But this tutorial should show you the basic understanding of operating any HMI lights. The three main components to an HMI system includes the head, the header cable, and the ballast. Let's start with the head. The head has a few very important components including the yoke, the barn door, the bulb, the glass door to the bulb, the spot and flood, the silver reflector, and the power switch. The yoke is a way to reposition the tilt of the light as it's connected to a stand with the junior pin. You can lock it to however tilt you want. The spot and flood controls the spread of the light. So if you want to have a wider spread of the light, you want the bulb to be closer to the glass. And if you want to have a narrow spread of the light, you should position the bulb so it's further away from the glass. If you don't know, there is a indicator of spot and flood on the side of the light. There is a power switch on the side of the light just in case you want to turn on and off the light using the head. And lastly, there's the barn door, which controls the spill and the shape of the light. The only thing you have to watch out about the header cable is that it's rated properly. Every writes down on the side that it's rated for three different wattages. Some older ones only are rated for the 575, which you shouldn't use on the M8. You also want to check the holes in the pins of the connectors of the header cable, which I will show you guys later when I turn on this system. You won't be able to connect a header cable that's rated to another light, like for example a 4K, so don't worry about it. And of course watch out for loose copper or insulation. The ballast is the igniter of the bulb for the HMI and there's a lot of settings that you have to watch for an indicator that will let you know if the light is running properly or to see if the bulb is the wattage that you want. You just have to make sure that the ballast is compatible with the head and has the wattage compatibility of the bulb. Now let's look at the different buttons and indicators we have on the ballast. There is the ballast switch, the lamp switch, the light indicator, the frequency indicator, the frequency button, the intensity knob, and the wattage indicator. If you're not using DMX or wired control, you'll see the PE, lamp, and temperature LEDs on. That means the light is up temperature and is fully operational. The wattage indicator just lets you know what kind of bulb you put in the light. And if you do want DMX control, there's a DMX input and output and a DMX display on the back of the ballast. To change the bulb or quality check the bulb in the socket, you want to take off the barn door first with these two latches, the top and the bottom. Then on the side of the lamp, you should see this button. This is the latch to the door, so you just want to press that to open the glass door to reveal the bulb. This part is very important. Before you touch the bulb, you want to make sure that you have white gloves or any cloth that would prevent any oil from your hands to go in the bulb. Oil on the bulb will cause the bulb to blow up when it gets to temperature. So you want to hold the bulb first so it doesn't fall out when you loosen it. And all of the single-sided HMI bulbs from Airy are going to have the lock on the side of the lamp. Once you have the bulb out, you want to check that the pins are not rusted and in good condition. Check that there's no holes on the glass of the bulb and that all the components are still intact. You also want to check the sockets if there's any burnt ends because that will prevent the light from striking properly. Also, while the door is open, you want to make sure there is no melting on the silver reflector of the light. And the melting happens when people don't put the bulb in properly and it starts to melt the inner edge of the reflector. To put the bulb back into the head, you want to press firmly into the socket while you lock it. I tend to angle a little bit on the top to ensure that the bulb doesn't tilt down after it's put on. And I do a little pull just to ensure that the bulb is locked and secure in the socket. Now we're going to turn on the system. As you can see, the connectors of the header cable is configured in a way to only match the ballast and the head that they're supposed to go into. 
A trick is to connect it properly. You want to align the pins of the header cables on each side. Push in and twist until you feel and hear the lock. You also want to make sure that the switch of the ballast and the lamp switch on the ballast is off. I also make sure that the switch on the head is off as well. On set, you want to position the head first where you want the light to be and then header cable down all the way to where your ballast is. Now we're ready to plug in the power. Before you turn it on, I like to turn on the switch of the head because if you have the head on a stand and you put it up in the air, you won't be able to turn it on without turning that switch on even if you turn on the ballast. So to turn on the ballast, you just want to turn on the ballast switch first and then once the PE light is on, you wanna turn on the lamp button. As the light is turning on, I tend to put the intensity to minimum because as the light gets to temperature, it's gonna ramp up to the full wattage and it's gonna go down to the intensity that you set it to. And once it dims down, I know that the lamp is up to temperature and it's ready for use. I would also highly recommend to stay next to the ballast while the lamp is getting to temperature because you don't know if there's going to be any short, the bulb might blow up, or something happens where you have to turn off the whole system. While the light is on, you can change the frequency to match your camera settings so you don't see any flicker. And if you are shooting at high speed, there's a flicker free option, which is 1000 Hz. You can also change the intensity between 50%, which is the lowest setting, to 100%. To turn off the HMI system, you want to hit the lamp switch first, which is the circle switch, and then you want to hit the ballast. Lastly, you want to hit the switch on the head. Then you can disconnect it from power, disconnect the header cables, and wrap up the header cables and the ballast. You want to make sure to let the head cool off before you put it away. Troubleshooting with an HMI system can be very tricky because there's a lot of parts that make it work. But the most common troubleshooting is the micro switch. A lot of the times this will get loosened over time. You could do that by gently pressing into the door until the light turns on. The other common mistake is that people forget to put the bulb in. So obviously it won't turn on. So make sure that there's a bulb in there. And other troubleshooting could be the head, the header cable, or the ballast. The ballast might not have enough power to ignite the bulb so that could just be a bad ballast the head could have a short in it and so can the header cable so if you're renting it from a rental house you have to make sure that all of these are good before you leave because you don't want all this trouble troubleshooting on set and for the light not to work if you're unsure how to use a lamp and it's proper wattage you could just look at the side of the head and the ballast it will give you instructions and different numbers and ratings that might be useful to you or you can also read into the manual that you could find online for any of the ARRI systems but that's it for this tutorial of HMI lights you can use this method on any HMI system out there there might be a few differences like putting on the bulb with the double-ended which you have to open the inside of the light to put the bulb in but other than that all the HMI should work the same way Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.